there are questions that you are actually going to ask because you are a property investor or you are buying property, right? Yeah. But there are certain questions that will distinct you or that will set you apart from other people. So here's another one, right? I remember we were in a situation whereby we inherited tenants from the previous owner. As a new buyer, if somebody's telling you that you don't have the stress of looking for tenants, you're excited. You're like, that's, that's less stress for me. But now the question is really the quality of the tenants that you inherited. Let's speak property investing. No? Hit us up, man. What are we speaking about today? Today we're speaking about key questions or rather important questions that one should ask before buying. We know that when it comes to buying, one does really get emotional. One gets excited on the number of rooms or where it's situated or the piece of land. Like I've got two hectares and that's really why I'm buying. But let's get to the reason that questions that one should be asking before they buy. There are questions that you are actually going to ask because you are a property investor or you are buying property, right? Yeah. But there are certain questions that will distinct you or that will set you apart from other people, right? Yeah. So now I'm talking about the offer to purchase. I'm talking about the asking for the Lightstone report. If you are actually shopping for a property, just go to them and say, um, can I please see the Lightstone report? You'll see how shocked they actually do get. And for people, for, for, for first time investors, and you're really not sure if you should actually be asking this, this, the Lightstone report, what basically it does is that it gives you the true value of the property. So you can just go to lightstone.com and then it should actually be giving you the, what the property or the value of the property is. Little man, a, a, quick, a key question for me, right, when it comes to buying a property is that when we're looking at the offer to purchase, mm -hmm. one should be asking that what really comes with the property. I mean, you can see this in countless situations whereby you might like this property because it has solar panels. It also has a Jojo tank outside. And you're like, you know what? I can live alone. I'm not dependent on anything that's happening around me. Only to find out that once you've signed the offer to purchase, you did buy the property and then the owner leaves with it. How does one avoid that situation? So avoiding that situation would basically be you writing it down on your offer to purchase or sometimes people do actually put it on an addendum so addendum would be like if i'm taking you back to high school right <laughs> i remember with me then they used to say check appendix a so appendix a is basically addendum when you're speaking about property investing this is a follow-up on what you should actually be looking out or the agreement that was actually made after the offer to purchase was actually signed now i remember i i I love the last person that bought our property guilt trip us, right? It wasn't really guilt trip, but we ended up leaving a stove for her. Now, it wasn't a necessary thing for us to actually do <laughs> because that was the stove that we were using for our people that were actually fixing the property. So the guys that were fixing the property used to have a stove in that property. And now we didn't actually take our stove when we left the property. Now, remember, when you're signing an offer to purchase, you're signing for the for the irremovable item that you're actually purchasing there. Mm. So it's the property itself, right? So now if you are actually going to be saying that, no, but I saw curtains when I was viewing the property, if the person took the curtains, then it's it's that, man. The thing that you are actually purchasing is the property itself. So please don't make the mistake of saying that um, there were curtains there, so I also needed to have the curtains. If you also wanted to have the curtains, they would have been in the negotiation, and that should have actually been stated on the offer to purchase before everybody signed. Or if everybody did sign, and that was a follow-up, then you should actually have an addendum that will actually bind the person or the seller that yes, you should leave the curtains behind because I like them so much. So man, what you're saying is that a valid point when you're signing the offer to purchase is that you are signing for the irremovable objects. So now in this case, for instance, we did see, a, we did witness a case whereby somebody took the solar when they left, the previous owner took the solar when they left. Mm -hmm. So was that, would you say that one could fight that or it's, it's not worth it? Man? man, if it is on the offer to purchase, right? If it is on the offer to purchase, then that's something that you could fight. However, it's not, if it's not on the offer to purchase, then definitely you can't fight that, right? But now let's look at it if it is on the sellers, on the, on the, on the, on the to offer purchase. to purchase. Now look at this particular situation. If the solar panel of their property costed around okay if the solar panel in that property costed around 2000 and it's going to take you 2500 for your attorney to sign and tell that person that you want the offer to purchase yeah. now the question is does it really make sense for you to actually fight that person 
Now, for me, it doesn't really make sense. Just buy the solar to solar panel as soon as possible. Yeah. I remember with what you just said right now, there's also a case whereby the previous owner didn't disclose that the tap was leaking. And then now the new owner bought the property and then discovered that the tap is leaking. So the question was, do I take this person forward because of a leaking tap? Only to find out that if you bought, you know those black, I don't know, I don't know their names, but it's a rubber. It, it goes for less than even 10 bucks. You yeah. bought it, installed it, yeah. and then your, 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 your problem is solved. So it's really interesting when it comes to understanding the offer to purchase and what you are signing for. So someone says that they learned the hard way. The previous owner uh, took the locks. That's, 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 that's tough. That's tough. I think that owner was just being spiteful because most of the time we've never got into a property and someone takes away the locks. So I really understand where you're coming from. Yes, right? Yeah. So now if someone left with a lock, this basically means that that property is actually open to anybody to come through and take whatever they want. Now there are countless number of properties that people actually took the, the wiring in the property. They took the plumbing on the property. Now the question is that whose fault is it? Is it your fault? I don't want any one of you guys that are in the live right now or looking through YouTube right now to take this lightly. Now, if we need to really understand or if we really understand what an offer to purchase is, this is a legal binding document that will bind you to whatever that's written on that offer to purchase. Now, a lot of people just sign where they need to sign and then also put initials where they need to put initials. Now, as a property investor, I'll give you our game. What we do is that if I'm actually going to be renovating a property, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a clause that we put there on the... You're going to give it away. I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. <laughs> so there's a clause that we put there on our, on our offer to purchase that you need to have brought somebody that will thoroughly inspect the property should anything happen wrong. Yeah. So now say for instance... So that's, that's on the, the, the buyer side. That's on the buyer side. So now if you are coming on, if you are coming on, right, as somebody that's going to be buying my property and I know that I wrote that down on that particular, um, on that, on, there's a clause that really states that you need to have brought someone to thoroughly check the property. What we'll then do is that we'll paint somewhere so that the crack doesn't actually show that much. Now, if you are coming through and buying a property to such a person, right, now you are left with the property. <laughs> now, you are left, the knows. <laughs> now you are left with a property that's bad, that's in bad shape And now if you do decide to take it to court Say for instance if it's something that's really bad Like a structural damage yeah. Now if you are taking this person to court They will show you on page 9 Section number 10.1.1 That they had actually put this in, in place So now that's why we're always saying to people That if you are actually going to be purchasing a property It's then important for you to go through to the to the what's this to the attorney to actually verify if everything that's on that contract is really 100 percent and it doesn't bind you to any any bad thing i'll also give you an example of um looking at your your rental right rental if you're going into the rental space you need to have an, a rental or lease agreement that speaks directly to you now estate agents have gen generic rental um, lease agreements right now if you have certain conditions that you'd want to put into that lease agreement or the offer to purchase you need to make sure that you communicate that with your with with the person that's actually going to be signing or doing that offer to purchase guys please 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 don't get into that problem again so, so here's another one right i remember we were in a situation whereby we inherited tenants from the previous owner as a new buyer, if somebody's telling you that you don't have the stress of looking for tenants, you're excited. You're like, that's, that's less stress for me. But now the question is really the quality of the tenants that you inherited. Because now that you've inherited those tenants, and now you get to really understand their psyche and where they're coming from, that's when you get problems and now you're thinking that property investing is a scam, that why, do I, why am I getting so much stress? I've been in a situation whereby I inherited terrible tenants. And trust me, they won't change because there's a new owner. That's their relationship with money. They don't value it or they don't even value you as a property investor. And then I've been in a situation whereby we made sure that we qualify the tenants before we went in. And trust me, the situations, both of them were different. Even dealing with when one was in problems, the, the, it was easy to even communicate that, okay, you're defaulting on this and this can't happen because I even know this, that as a young person, I mean, it goes without saying, when you're looking at us, you'll be like, ah, these guys are young. 
However, now they tend to take advantage of you because you're young. However, here's the thing is that even with me as a young person, I can't be in a situation whereby I'm afraid to engage my tenants. Because now here's the thing, we all start off as very good people. I remember, I never used to even think about fighting with an older person. And I'm not saying that you should fight with an older person. But what I'm saying is that if somebody senses that you're a good person and you're willing to understand, what effect does this have towards your business model? Because now the bank won't be like, you've got a nice smile, level. you understand that you don't need to pay this month. I'm in that situation right now. We're still up immediately after this life. We need to organize funds because somebody took us for granted. Now the question would rather be then, how do you deal with it? Because that tenant will be well aware that, oh, I see this guy's a soft spot. Mm. Even when something else happens, that's going to happen again. So it's, 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 it's a business. Property investing is not personal. It's a business. Yeah.